Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're told that the table shows the mean average distances d of the planets from the sun, taking their unit of measurement to be the distance from the earth to the sun, so earth is one distance away, and their periods t, the time, in revolution, time of revolution in years. So in part a, we're asked to fit a power model to this data. So if we're saying this is a function of d to model t, then it would look like t is equal to some constant k times d to the b for some exponent b. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a linear function, find the linear regression of that, and then turn it back into a power function to get a model for the data. So the first thing we do is we take the ln of both sides. So the ln of t, the natural log, is equal to the natural log of k times d to the b. The natural log of t is equal to, if we have two things being multiplied within the natural log, we can take the natural log of their sums, or we can take the sum rather of their natural logs. So this is the natural log of k plus the natural log of d to the b. Natural log of k plus if we have an exponent, we can bring it out as a coefficient, b times ln of d. And now if we say, okay, let y equal ln of t, let c equal ln of k, and let z equal ln of d, then we have y is equal to c plus bz. And here you can see we just have a linear function a function of z to model y. So we can do a linear regression, right? And you can do this on your calculator by putting in the points. Um, you can do it on an online calculator. All you have to make sure is that you are putting in the natural logs of all these values because we're not actually modeling z and y. We're modeling the natural log of d and the natural log of t. But if you put in the natural logs of all these values, get the linear regression, you get y is equal to 0 plus 1.5z, right? y is equal to 1.5z. When you actually put it in, you'll get 0 0.0003 plus 1.49999, but just round them. And now we can plug back in our variables that we took out. ln of t is equal to 1.5 ln of d, plug in for y and z. And now, if we take e and raise it to both of these sides, we have e to the ln, the e to the natural log is e to the log base e of t, so this is just t is equal to e to the ln of d to the 1.5, right? If you have two things being multiplied in your exponents, you can do the base to one of them, so e to the ln d to the other, to the 1.5, e to the log base e of d is just d to the 1.5. So therefore, our model is t equals d to the 1.5. This is the power function that models this data. In part b, we're told Kepler's third law of planetary motion states that the square of the period of revolution of a planet is proportional to the cube of its mean distance from the sun. Does your model corroborate Kepler's law? It does. If we do a little thing for b here, we have that t is equal to d to the 1.5. 1.5 is 3 halves, so this is d to the 3 over 2. In a fraction in the exponent, the numerator is the actual exponent of the um, base, and the denominator is the root, so this is the square root of d cubed. If we square both sides, t squared is equal to, the square root of something squared is just the thing itself, so d cubed. And we can see here that the square of the period of revolution, t squared, is proportional to the cube of its mean distance from the sun, d cubed. So we can say, yes, it is corroborated. Because we have modeled it as we did in A. 